Harvard law professor and famed criminal defense attorney Alan Dershowitz. Alan is also the author of the new book on that war called Terror, uh, Terror Tunnels, the case for Israel's just war against Hamas. Alan, uh, good morning, and we thank you for joining us. And uh, how did you react when you heard the ICC was going to move forward? Well, this means that uh, marks the death of the ICC. It will never become a uh, recognized international organization. Uh, there are three reasons why. Number one, uh, it, uh, Palestine is not a state. It doesn't have boundaries. How can you tell what's occupied and what's not when there's no agreed upon boundaries? The Supreme Council 214 allowed Israel to take some but not all of the territory. Uh, number two, Israel passes the test of complementarity. Complementarity means the ICC has no jurisdiction to investigate any country that has a legitimate legal system. And if Israel's legal system is not legitimate, neither is America. And the United States will never, ever join a court that says that uh, uh, Israel's legal system doesn't pass the test of a legitimate legal system. And number three, Israel is the most moral army. No country in the history of the world facing threats comparable to Israel has ever responded with more compliance with the rule of law more concerned for the life of civilians, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, more warnings to civilians. So to pick Israel to be the first, essentially, Western nation to investigate, I think will do more harm to the ICC than it will to, uh, to Israel. Do we still have you there, Alan? Yeah. Okay, yeah. just want to make sure, because... Your signal's a little off, so we're, we're getting most of what, you, what you're saying, so we're okay, going to keep you on. So, Alan, this morning there's news that an Israeli helicopter strike killed at least six members of Hezbollah in Syria. Some have called this a declaration of war. What are your thoughts? Well, Israel has a legitimate right to kill terrorists who are trying to engage in terrorist acts against uh, Israel. Imagine how much better it would have been if France had killed the terrorists before they killed the 17 people or if uh, Belgium manages to kill the terrorists who are uh, throwing the whole country into turmoil, Israel has a perfect right. These are terrorists who are planning terrorist acts on the northern border of Israel. Israel did the right thing. They should be praised, but not in any way condemned. So do you think, though, that Israel could be involved in another war? I don't think so. I don't think Hezbollah is looking for a war. Now, Iran might be looking for a war to divert attention from their nuclear program. And, of course, Hezbollah is a wholly owned subsidiary of, of, uh, of Iran. So if a war starts, it will be as a decision made by Iran in Tehran, not by Hezbollah in Beirut. Well, that, that's an interesting take, Alan. In, in the minute that remains, we heard that among those killed, the son of one of uh, the Hamas leaders, the son in his own right, uh, uh, one who was uh, very involved in this, and uh, the, the response from Hamas was, get ready, we're coming back, and... Uh, they seem to suggest they're going to they're going to be spreading violence, and there was talk of another war. But do you believe anything like that would be driven by Iran instead of Hamas? Forty seconds to answer, sir. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's Hezbollah, not Hamas, that really would be fighting the northern war. And Hamas is a Shia, totally controlled function of Iran. So if there is any attack, it will be done by Iran. And if Israel would then have the right to retaliate against Iran including knocking out its nuclear program. I don't think it would do that, but it would be a war directed by Iran against it. All right, Alan, we appreciate your analysis of what is happening now in the Middle East. When we come back a little closer to home, this noted defense attorney, uh, not really on the defensive, in fact, being very assertive on uh, what he says is a false accusation. We'll let Alan tell us all about it as we continue here on America's Forum on this busy Monday morning. Alan, Prince Andrew yes. apparently is going to talk about this on Thursday, but you've already spoken out about the allegations against you. You say those allegations are demonstrably false. Do you care yes. to elaborate? Oh, yeah. Well, remember, she's made charges not only against me and Prince Andrew, but she claims that Bill Clinton and Stephen Hawking and I participated in an orgy together on Jeffrey Epstein's private island. You don't want to keep that picture in your head too long. Uh, the only time I was ever on that island was with my wife and my daughter, a Harvard business professor, his wife and family. Uh, the stories are completely, totally made up. He, uh, she named David Copperfield. She named uh, two prime ministers of Israel, 
she named the president of another country. I mean, this is a fantasy liar who's just making up story after story. Now, you know, I don't know for sure about any of the other people, but I know I have never, ever, ever uh, touched an underage uh, person. I never knew this woman. I never was with her. The story is completely made up by unscrupulous lawyers, and I am taking action against those lawyers, and uh, we will have this out in court. And when it's proved conclusively by my travel records, by other records, and by eyewitness testimony that I couldn't have been at the places she said I was at the times involved, uh, there will be consequences that have to be paid by her and by the lawyers. Meantime, she's ducking depositions. She's hiding away. She won't confront me. She won't testify. She won't appear. All she wants to do is scribble graffiti on a bathroom door or engage in a hit-and-run action. But eventually, she'll have to come to court. She'll have to swear under oath, and then she'll go to jail. Alan, we have to ask you, last week you talked about what it was like to be falsely accused, and as a criminal defense attorney, you defend people all the time. So what yeah. was it like when you heard those accusations for the first time, and, and now you're, you're coming on our show and, and actually defending yourself? What, what does that feel like for you? Well, first, I didn't take them at all seriously when the first I came out. What a joke, you know, uh, Stephen right. Hawkins and me and Bill Clinton. My wife laughed at it. We all laughed at it. But then when the media picked it up, primarily because of, of Prince Andrew, I had to take it seriously. It, it, you know, it's part of an education of a criminal lawyer. You know, I'm used to defending people, some of whom are falsely accused, and many of whom are not falsely accused. Uh, but to know with 100% certainty, 1,000% certainty, that there's no evidence for this at all, and that I'm totally falsely accused, it's a remarkable experience. It's a learning experience. And I have to consider it that way, and I hope the end result will be to change the law, because there is a gaping hole in the law today that allows unscrupulous lawyers to put something like this in a pleading. They don't even claim to prove it. They don't want to prove it. They don't want to hear it. They just put it in the pleading, then they say, I can't sue them because it's in a pleading. Uh, I can't respond because I'm not a party to the lawsuit. I'm stuck having to respond in the court of public opinion. But fortunately, they sued me for defamation. Now, that's a real joke. They have sued me because I'm defending myself in the court of public opinion. They're trying to deny me my first amendment right to speak out. But as a result of them suing me, I now get to depose them and the woman under oath. And that will end up in them, in my view, uh, uh, being disbarred and her going to jail because they will have to commit perjury if they repeat these statements under oath. We only have a few seconds remaining, but I'm just curious, why would she go through all this trouble? We only have about 20 more seconds. Money, 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 money. She sold her story to uh, British tabloids for money. She has a book proposal she's trying to get for money. By the way, in her diary, she doesn't mention me. In her previous notes, she doesn't mention me. It's like Pinocchio. Her, grow, her nose is growing longer and longer. She first started out never mentioning me. Then she said, I was in the house once. Then she said, I may have been uh, a witness to the fact that there were young girls, all of which were false. Then I may have been a witness to these crimes. And then suddenly... Last uh, month, uh, and, and also. Looks like you're headed to court. Alan, we're headed to a break. We thank you for your time.